sneaker reviews are back in your life, my friends. Really glad to have you here. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nikki for the More HK Smash YouTube channel. Today, what are we gonna be talking about? Well, the shoe I've got next to me here is the Travis Scott Air Trainer in the gray haze colorway. Now, I know I'm pretty far behind on the eight ball when it comes to the sneaker reviews, and for that, I apologize, but it has been an incredibly busy past couple of weeks for me. The amount of shoes that I've been able to get my hands on has uh, actually kind of surprised me a little bit. So I definitely have my work cut out for myself here, but we're catching up here a little bit. I was able to do my wear test, and in today's video, I'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about the shoe in general. We're going to talk about the sizing, talk about some of the pricing, and give you my overall thoughts on the sneaker. If this is your first time here, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're looking to get some more information on some sneakers. And of course, if you're a returning member of this community, welcome back. I'm glad to have you here. The Air Trainer, some of the history behind the shoe is it actually released in the late 80s as your, uh, I guess, general purpose athletic shoe. Some athletes like John McEnroe wore this shoe back in the late 80s, which actually kind of surprised me because I didn't even think a shoe like this could be used on the tennis court. Travis Scott took the original design that was designed by Tinker Hatfield and put, of course, his own creative spin on it, which I think surprised a lot of people because we were getting a lot of different general releases and even we uh, got a Saquon Barkley version of the Air Trainer, which I think did pretty well. But of course, it is a Travis Scott shoe, so we knew the shoe was going to sell out. Now, although the shoe did release in two colorways, it released at a $160 price point here in the U.S., which is actually not that bad considering that the price of the shoe today and as of this video, it's about the same price. I was fortunate enough to get my pair off of the GOAT app for under retail. It seemed like a lot of folks thought the shoe was gonna do really well considering it's a new Travis Scott silhouette, which also released around the time we were getting the Travis Scott Air Maxes, which clearly did a lot better than the Air Trainers. To be honest with you guys, I was more looking forward to the Air Trainers than I was the Air Max. Don't get me wrong, the Air Max is a great shoe, but getting a new silhouette, I think excites me a little bit more. Plus, I don't know about you guys, but this shoe kind of reminded me of a Jordan 3 and for those of you that have been following me for a little while, know that the Jordan 3 is one of my all-time favorite silhouettes. So in my mind, when it came to comfort and style of the shoe, I felt like this was a win for me. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the shoe. The Travis Scott Gray Haze Air Trainer has a light gray canvas upper with uh, some darker gray mesh overlays and a single stitch swoosh logos. As you guys can see on the side of the shoe, the logo is actually stitched in, which gives it a really nice, like, you could almost not see it from a distance, which I thought was really cool, but when you get up close, you can see the, the details on the stitching, which I think looks really, really nice. Canvas shrouds on the upper give wearers options for styling. At the heel and the inside of the tongue, concealed zipper pockets, which by the way, zipper pockets don't really work that well. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Of course, you've got the Cactus Corporation insignias at the heel and four foot Velcro strap add a custom feel. Let's talk a little bit more about that strap at the top of the shoe because I want to talk more about the fit. Now I do recommend going true to size and some of the feedback I had gotten before getting the shoe was to go down a half a size. Most Jordans that I like to wear tend to fit a little bit long so I do go half a size down so I treated this shoe the same way and I gotta say I think I would have rather have gone to my true to size. So if you're still on the fence about getting the shoe and you're not sure about sizing definitely go true to size. The strap on the upper on the other hand actually does give you a little bit more opportunity to adjust the feel of the shoe. So if you do decide to go half a size down, which is not necessarily a bad idea, just make sure you loosen up that strap on the top. It'll definitely make the shoe feel much, much more comfortable. Now I wore the shoe for about two weeks. I took it to the gym with me a couple of times, did some leg workouts in it. I walked around my neighborhood as I always do. The feel of the shoe definitely does not meet the same expectations as a Jordan 3. However, it is very easy to wear. Considering the shoe is primarily canvas, it's a relatively flexible shoe. So putting the shoe on, it kind of wraps around your foot a little bit more than some of the other shoes. I feel a little bit more stiff. I do like the added hood that they put on the shoe. It's got a nice little touch. Uh, if you remove the, the hood or some of you are calling it the foreskin of the shoe, it reveals some really cool useful information about the tongue of the shoe, which I think a lot of people miss that smaller detail. So the hood of the shoe is meant to be folded a certain way so that it could be stored inside the tongue. And the idea of having the hood is to kind of save the shoe from the inclement weather. So if you decide to go on a hike with it, which is what it's built for, which kind of surprised me, is you can actually take the hood off if you don't want it, 
fold it up and then throw it into the tongue so that you don't have to carry it around. And like most people, including myself, I took the hood off and I threw it into the box because I have absolutely no use of putting it into the tongue. And I tried to fold it the way that they told you in the instructions, but uh, I simply could not figure it out. And every time I got close to it, it didn't seem like it was quite enough to fit inside the tongue. So if anyone was able to fold up the hood properly and get it into the tongue, please let me know because uh, I would love to actually try that out. Now, speaking of the zipper pockets on the air trainer and just like some of the other Travis Scott shoes that we've gotten in the past just like the Jordan 1 there are these uh, secret compartments that you have on the shoe this one has two of them one in the tongue and then there's one on the heel the one thing I noticed about the heel zipper is that it is completely useless absolutely useless feature it is simply just a hanging zipper I've had issues trying to get the zipper to open completely and when I did I could barely fit coins inside of that pocket if you even want to call it that so for now I'm going to consider this more of a cosmetic feature of the shoe than it is an actual functional feature of the shoe now the overall comfort of the shoe is good I really didn't have a problem with it overall comfort of the shoe is really good it doesn't necessarily meet the same standards as like a Jordan 3 so if you're looking for that air bubble feel you're not going to get that with the shoe it is a straight up canvas shoe it it is very comfortable though. It's very flexible. So it makes up in places where Jordan 3 does not. The added Velcro strap, you can adjust it. You can actually adjust the feel for your foot. I did notice that on the right shoe, and maybe this is just my pair, but I feel like my toe is rubbing against the inside. And even if I loosen up the shoe a little bit with the Velcro strap, I'm still getting that rubbing sensation. So sometimes I can't wear the shoe for that long. And that was one of the things that I had a problem with early on with the wear test. So I don't really think you're going to have a problem in pretty much any... Uh, terrain that you decide to wear these in and because it's canvas if you decide to get it dirty uh, you might have a problem cleaning it but other than that pretty much any terrain you throw at the shoe it'll do just fine now I did wear the shoe with and without the hood during some of my walks and I noticed when the hood was on it felt like the shoe was significantly tighter and then obviously I lose the ability to adjust how the sizing is from not having easy access to the velcro and uh, yeah, didn't really like that. So I don't know if it's a good idea to wear the hood unless you decide to maybe go outside with the shoe and it's raining. And you know what? Considering the shoe is going for under retail in most places, if you're thinking about getting a Travis Scott shoe, if you don't have one yet, I think this is a great option. Both colorways are really great. I kind of prefer the gray haze just because that colorway is a little bit louder for me. I like the way that looks. The, uh, the chocolate colorway, I think, looks really great as well. They're both going for around the same price under retail. So if you see your size under retail and you want to add a Travis Scott shoe to your collection without breaking the bank too much, this is a great option. That'll do it for today's sneaker review. I appreciate you guys for being here. And of course, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And let me know in the comment section, is this a shoe that you're thinking about picking up? And if you did, what do you think of it? I will see you guys in the next video. Peace and love.